On the 9th of August 2010, there was an article in the Sydney Morning Herald titled Options for Special Need Kids. The article was about the influx of children diagnosed as special needs and how it is causing children to be at the heart of a heated uproar regarding how special needs students should be educated. Should they be in a mainstream classroom or separated from the normal students? News reports courtesy of ABC News from July and August 2010 regarding similar stories, parents fighting for disabled kids and teachers still struggling with the needs of children. Report that since the developments in medical science and better by diagnostic tests, infant survival rates are higher which has led to the increased population of special needs students. Children with special needs or a disability have been labelled as different because they have distinctive characteristics which are not classed as the socially accepted norm. Society lacks tolerance and classes the disabled to be distinctively different leaving a great length between the binary opposites in the zone of difference. Special needs, the difference, on one end of the axis and what society classes as the normal on the other, the dominant group. Statistics were given in the 2010 Sydney Morning Herald article by the then Federal Education Minister Julia Gillard. Julia Gillard said that the number of students with special needs attending schools nationally had, ri had risen by approximately 40,000 in 1981 to 95,000 in 1998 and exceeding 150,000 in 2008. However, in July 2010, a study was conducted in New South Wales alone and as you can see by the figures listed below, they nearly match the national 2008 figures. Although children with disabilities have been integrated into mainstream schools for many years, a diverse group of residents within communities throughout Australia do not welcome or support the idea with conflicting attitudes. Even though most carers and educators think it is important to have special needs children in mainstream classrooms as it's beneficial for progress and preparation for the real world also was good for all students to be exposed to a broad range of human experience. In contrast, because of the integration, others are concerned about their child's needs not being met, both normal and special needs students. The other big concern is bullying, because of the child's vulnerability, their differences and an intolerant society. Below is a link to an article about a young boy with Asperger's who was bullied out of a local school by other pupils' parents. It is important to educate students the concept of or understanding and working with differences through positive othering. The proposed lesson plan intends students to understand and open their eyes to the difference and diversity within the school, focusing on the special needs students and their conditions, ideally suggesting special needs and disabled as a resistance identity, hopefully encouraging a project identity and have special needs and disabled students seen and accepted as a social norm. A suggestion for bringing awareness to the issue would be to have one of the selected articles projected from a laptop onto a whiteboard. The teacher may read the article aloud and at the end ask reflective questions. Who can tell me what the article was about? And what are your opinions on the issue? Are we a mainstream school that have integrated special needs students? The lesson would then be continued with a role play activity. Role play allows learning about real life in a protected context. Students take on the role of someone with a disability. They will move, think and act like that person, even taking on their values. Different students will be involved and taking on different roles. The example I'm going to use for the role play activity is ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorders. Students will be given a brief overview. The different forms of ASD will be listed, such as Rett syndrome and more commonly Asperger's and autism. We'll explore the different characteristics and behaviours, what they dislike and management techniques so that students can grasp a better understanding and prepare for their role play activity. The lesson will continue with a selected individual to take on the role as a pupil with ASD. The remaining students will be split into three groups, torch, noise and colours. On my command, torch students will enter the stage flashing their lights. This is because autistic and Asperger's are easily distracted by light. Once signalled, torch students will return to the floor and noise students will enter, invading the students' personal space and being rowdy with general noise, chit-chat, laughter, singing, whistling at a high level of volume. This is so that the role play student can understand how unsettling noise is and intrusive it is having personal space invaded. After another signal, noise, 
No students sit and the colour group enters with oversized coloured cardboard in primary colours. Someone with ASD finds colour in particular the primary colours overstimulating and distressing. Again, students will invade personal space and get in the student in role space to make him or her feel uncomfortable. Now the activity is complete, students are to return to their sitting positions and engage in a whole class discussion. This gives students the opportunity to engage in critical thinking. The teacher will prompt thoughts by asking students, how do you think the student in role felt during that activity? Why do you think that? Ask the student who was in role if the other students are correct. Request to elaborate on his or her response. Continue to ask the whole class if they've had a change of opinion in relation to the article since partaking in the activity. Why? The activity could be, to con could be continued, selecting a new student and adapting role to somebody with a physical disability, possibly in a wheelchair, a blind student or someone with ADHD. Conclude the lesson by explaining to students that people with a disability do not have a choice. They did not choose this particular quality of life. And to keep in mind, it does not make them any different to you or I. They may behave differently, but they are generally very much intelligent and could quite potentially have similar interests and ideals to you. Always be supportive and thoughtful. Treat others as though you would expect to be treated. As a pre-service educator, we will be educating the future generation. This generation is more than capable of changing the world. If we can liberate their minds and challenge their current conspiracies, opinions and thoughts, it may make a difference and could quite possibly change how the society of the future views those that are classed as disabled or have special needs.